In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's take a look at declaring a property. So properties have a get and set accessor, which are both optional. The get accessor returns the value. The set accessor sets the value. Now behind every property, there is an underlying private variable inside the class, which the get and set accessors control the access to. Values assigned to the property and therefore passed into the set accessor are assigned to the default parameter called value. Let's take a look at the syntax of a property. First, we have a class declared called my class, and inside the scope, we're going to have a private variable. In this case, the private variable is of a data type of int. You'll notice that I named this private variable with an underscore to start the name. This is not required, but it is a best practice. Next, you'll typically need to use the public access modifier for your properties to indicate that this property is going to be available for all the different sections of code within your project. The data type of your property should match the private variable inside the class. So in this case, both the private variable and the public property are both data types of int. Then after the data type, you can see the name of the property is my property, followed by the open and closed curly braces to indicate the scope of the property. Next, inside this my property scope, we're going to use the get keyword. And after the get keyword, we once again use the open and closed curly braces to indicate the scope of the get accessor. Now, since the purpose of the get accessor is to return a value back to the caller, we're going to use the keyword return, followed by the value that we want to return back to the caller. Since the value that we want to return back to the caller is stored in this underscore my property private variable, we're just going to return back underscore my property. Then finally, the set accessor also uses the open and closed curly braces to indicate the scope. Since the purpose of the set accessor is to store the value that's assigned to the property, you can see that we're assigning the keyword value to the underscore my property private variable. So when someone assigns a value to the my property property, it's essentially actually going to assign that value to the underlying private underscore my property variable. Then when the user asks for the data from the my property property, the get accessor will simply return back the value that was set for the underscore my property variable. Let's take a look at some code to make this concept a bit more concrete. So here we have my class class, and I've went ahead and copied it and put it into this declaring a property folder and changed the namespace here for the class as well. Now inside the my class scope, let's go ahead and declare a couple of private variables. So we're gonna do private, we're going to say it's a data type of int. And the first one we're going to do is underscore value one. And the next one we're going to do is another private variable data type of int, and it's going to be underscore value two. Next, we're going to declare our public facing interface for this property. That's going to be using the public access modifier. And then we're going to need to use the data type, which is going to be an int. And once again, this data type matches the private internal variable here. So public int, and then the name of the property is value one, followed by the open and close curly braces to indicate the scope of this property. Next, we'll use the get accessor, followed by its own set of open and close curly braces. And the get accessor is going to return back the value from the underscore value one private variable. So we'll just simply do return underscore value one. We also need to use the semicolon since this is going to be the end of the return value statement. Next, let's go ahead and do our set accessor. So we'll do set followed by the open and closed curly braces. Then inside the set accessor, we're wanting to set the value for underscore value one and we're assigning it a value equal to the special keyword of value. C Sharp automatically takes the value that's being assigned to the value one property 
and puts it into this special variable called value. So essentially what's going to happen is when the user or whoever is writing code accesses this value one property on your my class class and they try to assign a value to this value one property, that value is actually going to get stored inside of this value one parameter and then it's going to be assigned then to this underscore value one private variable. Then if the user wants to return that value or retrieve that value that they stored in the property, the get accessor is going to look at the value that's inside of the underscore value one private variable and return that value back to the user. Now let's set our property for value two. We'll do public int value two, open and close curly braces, but this time we're not going to use the get accessor. We're just going to use the set accessor. Then we're once again needing our open and close curly braces. And just like before, we're going to assign value to the value that comes in the keyword value. So the difference here is that the user will be able to set the value for the property of value two, but they will not be able to retrieve the value from value two. Let's go down here to the do math method, and I'm going to change the static value of two, and I'm going to change it to value one. Now, whoever is using this my class class object will be able to set the property value one and then call the do math method, and the do math method will look at the value or the property value one check to see what the value of value one is, and then return it back and put it inside as a parameter to this add to integers method. Now I wanna show you one other thing that's really important to understand. There's a special keyword in the C-sharp language, and that keyword is this. This refers back to the base class that we're currently inside of. That would be this my class class. So this, keyword refers back to my class and on the my class class we have a value one property which is located right here now let's go ahead and also inside of this add to integers method pass along the value for the second parameter so we're going to do value two but this time we have a problem we can see that there's this red squiggly line, and if we hold the mouse over it, we can see the property or indexer my class value two cannot be used in this context because it lacks the get accessor. And that's exactly the behavior that we would expect because once again, this value two property does not have a get accessor. You can only set the value. So how would I then retrieve the value for this value too if I can't access the get accessor. Well, since this do math method is also residing inside of this my class class, I still have access to these two private variables. So I can, instead of trying to access the property, I can use the internal variable of underscore value two. Now this allows the user of my my class class to set the value of value two, then call the do math method and it will use both the value of value one and value two.